Well, thanks for, for hopping on this call. Uh, yeah. How crazy have the last three months been for you? Uh, extremely crazy. <laughs> um, we went from like having our entire summer plans, you know, having literally it all mapped out already to having nothing planned. We don't know what's going on. We're living um, week to week, you know. Mm-hmm. What we are basically trying to do what the governor tells us. So we're living week to week. So that's kind of tough. And then it's just so much information. It's probably more information than people need as far as the recruiting process and stuff going on because that's where we have a lot of issues. Because yeah. our parents are so confused. They're getting so much information and they're so confused. So. Well, I hope we're not confusing them. It's not you. It's not like you. (laughs) (laughs) When you post something, they scroll through those comments and get more confused. Oh, yeah. It's those people. (laughs) It's like the worst game of telephone being played and people are taking it as fact. And they shouldn't. Um, It's hysteria. People don't know what to think. So they're, they're coming up with their own ideas and they're passing it along to other people who don't know what to think. It's, it's, yeah. Crazy. What's so what's just, what's been uh, the most common misconception uh, during this period of like literally news changing uh, every yeah. couple weeks? It feels like every couple weeks. I think the biggest thing I find is that people think there's no time. There's no time. I'm right. Not I know. Like there's plenty of time. I don't know exact timeline, and I don't think it's going to happen now when a lot of people want it to happen. But it will happen. I think that colleges will get back into a group when they can, and they'll have kids they still have to look at. Um, I I mean, I think it's going to be ever-changing. I think programs are changing. So, like, I think some programs will be shutting down. Some programs will not be. Some programs will get budget cut. It's going to be a lot changing. Yeah. I know. I'm with you about the time thing because – the money isn't going anywhere. No, it's still going to be there. It's, it's still going to be there. <laughs> already, the people that don't need kids don't need didn't need kids before the pandemic. So yeah, that was changing. Mm-hmm. So I just think that I don't know. I think people are just kind of crazy. They're making themselves worse by overthinking it. Um, I was telling someone the other day. I'm like, people used to recruit this way. Like it wasn't. It was, they didn't see you until you played. They didn't see you in the month of May. They didn't see, like, and we still survived and we still got recruited and we still went to college. Video wasn't even available. Yeah, it was not. That was not big when I played. So I'm like, you'll be fine. But yeah. I know. I think I think it's because they grow. I mean, they're living in an age where it's like, you know, first to commit, like, Da 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 da. Like this camp, these trips. Yeah, but I think yeah. it's gonna help some kids. I was telling. Uh, I agree. Kids, they're not ready. I go. You're lucky. No one can see you. Like you guys, <laughs> not in a bad way. They're yeah, still, right. Perfect yourself. Get get your best because sometimes I think kids are seen too early and they're not ready, and then coaches go, oh, that kid's not good, when really that kid's just not developed or that kid's not ready to be shown to you. So now develop the position you want to learn, learn the drop ball you should have, learn the change up you should have. This summer, take that time and do all, like change things. A lot of times kids don't even like work on their swings because they don't have the time. Like fix whatever you were trying to fix that you, you know, fix. But Mm -hmm. we'll see. We shall see. I think it's still... People are just so antsy that it's it's gonna they're gonna go video crazy. They're gonna stream. Yeah, and that that's gonna turn people off if they do it too much. Yeah. You already know this. Yes. Yeah, so I just I'm like relax. It's gonna be okay. But they're gonna have to see that before they will listen. So we'll see how mm-hmm. it goes. How goes. Um, just kind of um, how you got into into um, like basically overseeing Impact Gold. Um, obviously, you played at LSU. I'm sure you, <laughs> there's a lot of pride there. Um, 
first off, kind of talk a little bit about um, your recruiting experience, just kind of briefly. And then uh, from that point, how did you get to where you are now? Okay. So I um, played in Houston, ball, you know, of course. And I always, like, I don't know why I can't really, it's really my dad, I guess I'm that person. My dad was like, you're going to LSU. LSU's the school you should go to. And I was like, oh, okay, that's the school I should go to, great. Um, and I went on visits, I met Coach Gerard. She was amazing. I like instantly was like, okay, I'm going to LSU. Um, I went on only one other recruiting trip and that was to OU and I was scared to death of Coach Casso. <laughs> she scared me to death. <laughs> Um, she was and like, you love her now. I love her now. <laughs> she's like, this is business. We're going to put on our business suits. And I was like, oh, I, I don't really want to put on a business suit. I want to <laughs> have some fun too. So, mm, yeah. LSU. Um, and Coach Gerard had uh, Trina Peel and LaDonia Hughes and some of the greatest LSU centerfolders that were there before me. And they were like, you can do it. You're going to be great. You're going to be the next one. And I was like, I'm in. And so I committed like the next week. Um, I went home, of course, because you're supposed to do that. But I instantly committed. Um, went there. I loved it. I loved every second. I loved every football game. I loved every crawfish boil. I <laughs> <laughs> Were you a junior? Um, I was a sophomore. Sophomore. Okay. Sophomore. Mm-hmm. Fall of my sophomore year. I was playing 18 gold, though, already. So I started playing 18 gold as a freshman. Okay. Back when I played, that was the thing. If you were good, quote, unquote, you moved up early. Yeah. You played 16s 16s for one year, and then you jumped up to 18s. So that's what I did. And um, all of my team was committed at at that time. So I was, like, the last one, quote, unquote, to get committed because they were all older. Yeah. So. Played with them. I played with a lot of good kids, actually. A lot of at that time, um, impact was A and M or Texas. Yeah, <laughs> I and mean, that's where the kid was going. I felt like, and then I was going to LSU. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. I enjoyed LSU a lot. Um, and then I always knew I wanted to coach, though. I will say mm-hmm. that I knew I wanted to be some sort of coach. I thought maybe a college coach. Um, and then you can't like say the things you want to say as a college coach. So that didn't work out. <laughs> um, so I went actually and got a chance to volunteer at University of Houston. So I moved home. Let me back up. I moved home. My mom passed away uh, a couple years after college. And so I moved home because I'm the oldest of four brothers. I have four brothers. And so I wanted to be closer to my family, my dad. And I got the chance to volunteer at Houston where I met my now wife. Mm-hmm. And so we decided to get together. I thought there's no way I can be a college coach and she can be a college coach and she's a way better coach than me. So I'm going to let her stick with the coaching. And so I started working for impact. Mm -hmm. Um, At the time, my dad was struggling at balancing running the org and having four sons still in high school. I mean, my brother is, will graduate as 2020, my twin brothers. Mm -hmm. They were young. And so I thought, okay, well, I can do it. And so um, I started helping. And then finally, he, he kind of, about 2015, he was like, okay, you can, like, he kind of accepted the fact that I was running it. And so yeah. he handed it over to me. Running mm. it. So running it yeah. And um, how does it feel to be um, one of the few females out there at, the field at the club level there's not very many no what's that like there, it's cool it, at the very beginning it felt kind of hard because um I felt like everyone looked at me as like Casey's daughter for years it took me they would say where's your dad well, where's Casey and I'm like well it doesn't matter where he is I'm the boss <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that for you know years yeah. um, but no I mean it feels good I hope that I'm ex- like inspiring the next group of um, women to go into this because I feel like it's our sport and I feel like we should have a say in where our sport goes. And Mm -hmm. so I really hope more get involved. I think more don't get involved just because it's a, I mean, it's a long path. It's a a grind. Yeah. It's a grind. That's a great way to put it. It's a grind. 
And I think a lot of people just don't realize it's such a grind until they get into it and then they get scared of it. But it's rewarding if you just put in your time grinding. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, more do it. I think about coaching at the club level. It's just like if you wanted to be, it's a lifestyle. And just like being a college coach, that's a lifestyle. And it just kind of depends if, if that's what, what you want and what you thrive on. And it's something that, that you take, you know, great pride in. And, and you, like you said, you said it's rewarding and, you know, it's just, uh, it's tough. I mean, I give it up for, for you, to you guys. I've done it before and, you know, it just, for me, yeah, it wasn't a lifestyle for me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, the hardest part I think people don't realize is you're working with someone else's everything. And I didn't realize that until I had a baby. I have a son that's one. But I never could understand why parents were so crazy, why they got so mad at us for any decision we made or why, why they just didn't trust us. But you're taking someone's everything. You're taking the thing that they value the most mm. and trying to help them get to their dream. But it's a long process and it sometimes is, um, sometimes they don't get what they want and they just can't accept it. And so it is hard. I, it's, I would say it's one of the hardest jobs just because people are crazy about their children. <laughs> and they have every right to me, but they're crazy about wanting their children to have what they want, when they want it, how they want it. And they think I'm standing in the way or whomever, you know, standing in the way. So it's a tough, it's a tough task, but it is the most rewarding when someone graduates or walks across the stage or signs. Like I have kids that are going to sign in my 21 class that they're going to be the first kid in their family to go to college. Like that's worth it to me mm. that's for free, you know? That's, yeah. That's worth it. So. Yeah. What, um, obviously you're part of the Texas fast pitch league and putting that together when you when you step back and you saw kind of the situation we're all in and you're looking out for your kids your organization um what were some of the the essential things that you knew uh your players needed uh going into the summer they needed, I, I really feel like they needed, um, they needed to play. I do feel like they need some sort of playing. They needed to practice or play. They need to have some sort of normalcy in a year that, or a season, I guess that has been taken from them. But I really wanted to give them, um, how do you put it? Like I, I wanted them to be comfortable because I felt like traveling, they were going to be uncomfortable. I felt like even they would do it. I do feel like my parents would say, okay, we're going to do it because we're supposed to. But I felt like parents would be so uneasy. Moms would be uneasy about putting their kids in any sort of harm because there was just so much unknown. We couldn't say where everything was coming from. We couldn't say how it was being passed along. We couldn't say, okay, is it going to be safe? Like we couldn't give them definite answers. So I just wanted to give them a little bit of like – a little bit of a sigh that they go, okay, we're going to be in areas that we know well. Maybe we only have to sleep outside of our bed twice this summer instead of five times like normal. Maybe we, you know, only are driving three hours away instead of driving 24 because I still have parents that drive to California um, or fly to California. So I just wanted to give them some sense of like, okay, they have their normalcy, but they don't have to worry that they're doing it. Um, and putting their kids in jeopardy. Right. So that was a big thing. And financial. I don't know how it's hitting on my families. I I don't try to get into their personal finances, but I did send out a form that asked them anonymously, you know, where are you? And a lot came back with some form of financial deficit since COVID-19. So I wanted to give them an opportunity to not spend you know, crazy amounts to try to have normalcy this summer. Mm-hmm. That was most important. Yeah. I'm so glad that you did that. Cause obviously if it, I think if it wasn't anonymous, you may have not known 
kind of the hardships your parents are going, what they're going through right now. And it's unfair to ask them to do all these things, knowing the, the stress that is going on behind closed doors. Yeah. And they're not going to tell me, I do know that about, you're not going to say, Hey, we can't afford it because they don't want their kids to know. A lot of kids won't ever know where their families are, are at financially to try to help them get to their dreams. So I agree with you. It's not fair. I think if I asked them to do it, they would do it. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they would even ask. So. When you're talking with your parents, I'm sure it, it might be, I'm guessing, a weekly basis now. Um, you know, dead period got pushed to June 30th and now it's July 31st. Um, outside of, you know, the fear of loss of time on the field, what are their other concerns and questions that they keep coming at you with? The number one, of course, is what happens since kids can come back? How is that going to affect them? How do they now not have money for my kid? Do they now not have you know, time for my kids. Should I look at other schools? That's the big one. And then, um, like, as far as tournaments, it's kind of funny. They ask, they're like, okay, if there's going to be no coaches there. Should we travel at all? Should we only play round robin? Should That was kind of what I got last night when it was announced that it was changed to the 31st. They go, okay, well, should we pull out of things that are more expensive and only go round robins? Should we – those are kind of the questions that I'm getting. And um, what was your answer? I know my answer. uh, Well, (laughs) (laughs) I have answers. I Uh told him that we would have to check because the other part of this is I don't want to waste the money too. So if it's already spent, I don't know if it makes sense to pull out just to, to pay more money to jump in something else. I have to figure that the conversation. Yeah. Logistically, you know. that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I have and to then you that. you would arguably be playing in something less competitive. Yes. And so that is kind of our motto for the summer is we are going to work really hard and we're going to try to train, but we're going to bring back competitiveness in softball, which for us, I don't, I never dealt with the showcase rules. I never put kids in if they struck out and put them back up. To, I never did those things to start, but I'm excited that no one else is going to do those things this summer. I'm excited that it's actually going to be full-fledged softball, trying to win, trying to beat you type of softball. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do understand that question. And I did, I will pose that question back to the major tournament providers and say, hey, what do you guys think? Because I think that's only fair. I think it's fair to bring it right back to them. Um, And for us, the other question is, okay, are we only going to play locally from here on out for the rest of our lives? No. We don't know that answer, but I don't think so. I like California. I like, (laughs) I do. I enjoy finishing my summer there. Yeah, right. I know getting out of the Texas heat, literally hell on earth. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I'm not pushing for that. Like I don't want to end my summer every summer in Texas. I enjoy getting out and seeing different parts. Sometimes, Chez, that's the only time my kids have gotten some places. I know some kids that their first plane ride is to Colorado or mm-hmm. their first time outside of the state is to Kansas City, which probably should change that, but, um, you know, <laughs> to California. Because Kansas City is a lot like Texas with the heat. Yeah. But um, I-, I enjoy getting them out and doing different things. So I don't plan on changing that. I think it's something that we're just trying to get through this summer. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm curious to see if what you and so many others have started in terms of like this league can almost um, bring back the thing that wasn't even broken in terms of being able to develop extremely competitive teams where you, you drive two to four hours And, you know, you visit every site and you can, I mean, that's basically the birth of like competitive California softball. That's what we did. We like, we went North, we went South, we went Central. Like that's why California at that, and still is is so competitive because you're able to drive and 
you're constantly playing against a uh, tough competition. Do you see that kind of happening in Texas? Could this be the start of that? I hope so. I, I think so. I think that we, for the first time, or for the most part, with the major orgs are on the same page. Um, that, like, I think we realize, like, it's big, Texas is big enough for all of us. It's okay. Um, when I played, that's how it was. You play, you played in Dallas, you played in Austin, you played in Houston, and then you played your nationals somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But for the majority of your summer, you're, you know, facing each other. Um, and I, I hope that's what it brings back. I hope that it brings back games that really matter um, against your person next to you. And they'll probably beat me. I'll beat them. We'll be yeah, forth, and totally. We put the strongest product in a nationals and you've done better. I, I think that's going to be the key. What I hope it also does is maybe um, allows the kids to understand winning and losing. Like, I think that's a struggle when they go to college is like, oh, we're here trying to beat them. Like, we're not going to just, we're not here just trying to get colleges to watch us. We're here to win. Like, we want to win. We want yeah. to, we want to, so I hope that kind of comes back. Yeah, that, that spirit kind of went away with the showcases. It did. It changed the purpose it did. of being and on I the field. It is a showcase my entire life. Same. I was not a, it's not a showcase. That's the part that's funny. It's turned into a showcase, but it wasn't when I played. It was yeah. Did you, did you play in the uh, Aurora or IDT? IDT, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, we know, we, I know, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was like big time. IDT. Oh my gosh, yeah, so competitive. Awesome. Yes, it was, it was like, it was, I mean, it was the highlight of our summers, even though we we're going to the same place every year, it was like, yes, we cannot wait, and then we went to ASA, that moved around the country, so we got to go somewhere else every mm -hmm. year, but yeah, it's, I hope that's what it brings back, that's what I'm really hopeful hopeful fingers crossed yeah so I know this is like down the road but and I know you guys have this conversation in in summer 2021 what does this league look like yeah because it's it's tough right you want this this league to remain strong and you want to participate in it uh but when you have you know the best of the best, mm -hmm. you know that they need to see the best of the best in other states. So what does that look like? So I thought with the formation, or when looking ahead, I'm looking at the formation of all these mini leagues. Um, I heard that there was going to be a California one as well for me. And so in my thought, <laughs> in my thought, <laughs> The top of our league faces the top of those leagues in a national format. Um, but I don't, I don't think it, I, I think we also go to the PGS. I think that we play our league, our league ends this day, and we still go to the major, major events. Maybe we don't go to 10 of them. Maybe we yeah. go to two. But I still think that there's room for us to do what we do local. Because in a normal summer, local stuff is probably already starting. It's yeah. in May, it's June. And I think July and August, we maybe are going to, you know, play against those other top teams in those other leagues or at the PGFs or at the Triple Crown. Um, I think they call it like USA Nationals. Mm -hmm. Those type of events. I think you still have those. I just think maybe you don't have 30 of them a summer. You don't have every weekend one that we're going to. I yeah. Traveling a little bit. Which okay. Financially. Because – if my parents know, man, I'm only traveling twice this summer outside of the state, that really does help them. That helps. Oh them my gosh. A ton. I, you know, I'm not traveling six times like some people do. Mm -hmm. That's totally different. So that's kind of what my hope is. For mm -hmm. Do you see your fall changing at all? Or <laughs> <laughs> can you talk a little bit about that? I don't know if it depends on, so it depends on two things. Where are camps at? Are camps starting in the fall? Because if camps are starting in the fall, I think you're going to have a mass rush for camp. I mean, yeah, all coaches are going to are missing camps um, to pay volunteers and things like that, so they're going to host them. But I think kids are missing camps, um, so I, I, it depends on where camps are, and then it depends on 
will the recruiting start like it's supposed to start in the fall? Like, does it start again in the six weeks from Thanksgiving or does it start sooner than that? Like, there's just a lot of questions that I have. I I feel like the, I already know this, like the division one committee and a lot of the coaches have already, I think, recommended that they add more days in the fall, especially when you lose out on, you know, two plus months of recruiting. Yeah. Like, where are they going to make up for that when they have to turn around and like start a season? Yes. Well, I think the only tough part about that is a lot of colleges are just going to try to be getting back on campus. That's yeah. the other thing. Are they having to do? Yeah. To- are they even going to be able to host camps? I mean, that's yeah. So if they can't host camp, is it going to become a renegades where we're hosting like non-institutional camps, like crazy? And there's non-institutional camps every day of the week, like probably. I, just don't, know how it goes. I don't. I think it's, camps are going to be what takes first priority for a lot of the. Mm, they want camp. Yeah, it's just hard so, when. Um, it depends when the it depends on when those schools open up, yeah. and. I don't I mean, know if the schools are going to be willing to take the liability to bring mm-hmm. all those kids on campus. I think that's going to be the key thing too is are they willing to bring all those kids on campus for camp? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so but I'm like, okay, am I going to host camp? Like, what do we do? We have to figure something out. Um, so I just, yeah. <laughs> I kind yeah, of I mean, well, to- I mean – If you, you, I mean, it's already, there's so many different, not so many different, but like the model of like, you have, you host a competitive tournament and then you, you host either a camp on the front end or back end, usually the front end. Um, that way the coaches can work it, make a little money and then go recruit the rest of the weekend. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for me is like, I need college football to go. Like, I don't – I love softball. I need softball, but I need college football to go so that we have softball. Like, right, without I know. college football starting, that's kind of where we're, we're going to be in a really tough situation if it doesn't kick off like normal. Mm-hmm. So, how, um, how are your 2020s doing? They're doing well. Okay. I have, I'm trying to think. Most of them or all of them have spoken to their coaches by now. They know what's happening. Um, to be honest, some of their scholarships have changed or are going to change um, the next year. So some coaches have already said for schools that don't have the five-year deal or the four-year deal, some of them have already spoken and said, hey, you know, in 21, something's going to change. And I just told my parents that that's a part of, that's just a part of dealing with COVID-19. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate and it's hopefully will never happen again, but that's just an unfortunate part. Um, I think that they're getting a little bit of normalcy here in Texas where they're doing like senior parades or uh, virtual graduations and things like that. So they're getting that back a little bit. Um, I know we're going to do something for them in TFL, something for them to get that kind of senior game thing mm-hmm. moment. So I'm hopeful that that's helpful for them because it's been a tough year for them. Oh yeah, so, absolutely. Bit. Cause I mean, you walk into school with what you envision, yeah. and yeah. it's it's not quite that when you. But do you remember, like, or do you sit back at your age now and go, "Oh, my high school prom was amazing." Like, no, that's what I told my kids. I go, "You, that's a blip on your life. Like, it sucks today, <laughs> but yeah. you will rem- <laughs> You'll be fine. It's a hardship today, but after that, you'll be fine. I don't ever uh, go back. No. <laughs> Mm-mm. I think about college, but I don't think about my high school prom or my high school. Yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, every everyone's high school experience was different. Mine was unremarkable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't look at I don't look back at it like fondly. I mean, I look back on my like club high school memories okay. more fondly than I do like high school. But so. I think they'll have a whole life. So I try to remind them of that. Like this is literally one little mic respect on your whole life will be you know it's tough today but you'll get over it yeah 100 percent 
Um, what about your 2021s? So same for them. They've talked, we've set up, they've talked to their coaches, a couple of them, their scholarships have changed. Um, and I've told them as well, you're still going to get the opportunity to go there. If some money was taken or needed to do this or do that, like it is what it is. I mean, it's not much that they can do. Not much that we can do. It's yeah. kind of, you know, crazy circumstances. And mm-hmm. for the most part, everyone has been understanding and they, they get it. Um, of course, you've had people that are like, what? Uh, you know, I thought I was getting this and now I'm getting this. Um, but it hasn't been, for us, it hasn't been too crazy. It hasn't been like, you know, 100% to zero. It's been a, a little bit from you know, multiple people, but I, I think it's been okay. Um, luckily they can talk. I think it's tougher on our 22s mentally because they just don't know where they stand. They don't know. They think they know who is interested in them, but they can't talk to them and say, yes, I'm interested in you. And then they think, um, you know, everyone thinks that every kid is coming back from college and that's not the case. They think yeah, it's a, it's a small percentage. Yes. And so I'm glad you said that because people think every kid's coming back and that's not the, that's not it. And so I think they think, oh, they're going to have no money for me because all of these kids are coming back and that's not the case. So I think they're having the harder time. Yeah. I think um, a good way to look at it is, you know, take your NCAA tournament um, teams that would be in the NCAA tournament or top 25, whatever, uh, right. you know, I think most of them are coming back. Yes. But then yes. after that, all those other schools, like it's but not going to be the case. And then the other piece of it is like, they already had things set up right. um, before this even hit. So but they is might it just even- 25 schools, they're not going to bring them all back. They're going to bring back the ones that they want to bring back. They're not going to bring back, you know, every kid that's on the rock. You know what I'm saying? They're only going to – I think it's going to be the top of their team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Gonna, yes. If you're mm-hmm. The player, impact players. Yeah, there you go. I put it, impact players, yes. Oh, my God, the pun on that? Did you just – oh, my <laughs> – I wasn't even trying. Put it in the commercial. Yeah. No, but I think I. So I, I try not to. I try to get them to stop freaking out. That's, I'm like, stop freaking out, man. It's gonna be. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. You're gonna play college softball. Where we don't know. With how much we don't know. But you're gonna play. There's yeah. so many opportunities. You're gonna play. Mm-hmm. So relax. um how how often are you having the same conversation over and over again uh with parents and players a lot a lot (laughs) and i get it like i said i learned this this year it's their most prized possession and they just want to make sure they're taken care of um and there's just so much conflicting information they know a girl that knows a girl that knows a girl that this happened to them. And so that means that it's going to happen to their daughter. Yeah. Or they know a guy that knows a college coach that was on the back streets that told them that, <laughs> you know, all the time. I know. It's the worst. Back. It's the worst game of telephone. Right. Yeah. So, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. I know just when um, dead period first got pushed back to June 30th, like people were going back and forth on the camp talk and it's just like it's unfortunate but we just have to like wait and see and if we do that we'll see the clear rules and procedures on how to go forward everyone is figuring it out together like no one has a playbook for COVID-19 that they're just not sharing with us we don't know bingo like (laughs) we don't know college coaches don't know administrators don't know club coaches don't know parents we all don't know and so uh, that kind of gives me a little bit of like okay we all don't know so I don't feel like I don't know something that they don't know none of us know I think some people I wish some people could just could say I don't know instead of spouting things um like it's gospel or the bible and just say I don't know I say I don't know I don't know when this you know but I think 
think they don't do it. And if you say it with such conviction so many times, it's the truth. And it doesn't make it the yeah. truth because you said mm-hmm. it many times. So yeah. that's the mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 gonna get crazy. I mean, I <laughs> someone called me and said, There's a whole conference that doesn't have softball anymore. And I was like, That's not true. It's yeah. not true at all. I go send send me where you saw that. And it was a chat room. I'm like, stay out of the chat room, please. Yeah, <laughs> right. Knock it off. Many chat rooms in like ninety nine or twenty two thousand. <laughs> like get out of a chat room. Thank yeah, you. just be thankful. There's no softball programs cut right now. Like, <laughs> I know and they're cutting other I, sports. I think some will come at some point. Yeah, I I, know, I agree with you on that. Um, yeah. It just it's expensive. We have an it expensive is. sport. You do have a very expensive sport. Um, I think I think colleges are just trying to make it through football season. I think once they make it through football season, if we can have one, they'll be like, okay, we're good to go now. I think they're just panicked that they won't get, and that's just such an intricate part of our budgets. Yeah. So, hmm. Yeah. So uh, has um, have the teams started practicing? We have. We've started practicing. Um, my Oklahoma teams have started playing. They started playing two weeks ago in Oklahoma. Cool. I'll be there next week. Oh, okay. For the Tulsa. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. We have teams there. Um, we've had some private parks in Houston that have decided that even though the governor says you, you have to wait till the 15th, that they could start now. So we've had actually some tournaments in Houston as well. We have not. Um, we're just practicing. We're still actually social distance practicing. So we use a fourplex. Outfielders go on one field. Info goes on this field. Pitchers go catchers. So we're we're kind of splitting up and getting our work in until the first. Mm-hmm. Have, you know, real practice. Yeah, I had a I had a um, a good talk with a physiatrist um, last week. And um, she lives in Canada, but just they were rolling out their plan for for youth sports. And it's like, you know, you have your bubble, which is like your team. And once that's okay, then you can kind of extend your bubble to more. And if everyone's okay, and then you just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I wish it would. Like, I wish we could roll it out. I think I just, I'm nervous about it going from like zero to a hundred. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm nervous about that. I really am. I'm nervous about it going from like nothing to like 300 teams in one area. So I, I hope that everyone, all the tournament directors do have some sort of social distancing. And I think they will. I think that we've had enough time. I think that's the, the only blessing with the uh, quarantine was that you got time to sit and think. So at least this didn't happen and then there was a tournament next weekend without any time to figure it out. We got months to kind of go, okay, where do I want this or this? And I think things will change. I think, you know, there may not be, there maybe won't be bleachers filled or, you know, parents next to each other. They might be in the grass. They might be, like, I think it's going to definitely change the way Mm -hmm. the softball is forever. Just like the airport changed after 9-11 yeah um, you know it's never gone back it's all it's now the precautions are the same i think softball and other sports will be the same mm-hmm. when you think about this time in in quarantine you mentioned uh having time to think what just looking at the silver lining what do you what else do you see as positives um that this could bring to the softball community since a lot of it and I'm sure you've seen is focused a lot on the negative and yeah, can't do yeah. this like the you know that squawking of all the negative things which really right. doesn't help the situation I thought it helped our communication to be honest we had to find other ways to communicate with our kids um of course zoom zoom stock probably went through the roof through this quarantine they probably like gained um, cause we, I zoom three to four times a day at mm-hmm. least. Um, I actually felt like I connected with coaches from other areas and other clubs more than I ever have before. I've been on more zoom calls with people from other areas than ever before. Um, and I think my kids have found another way to be creative. So 
and to get their workout in. So I've seen them learn, okay, if I use this tennis ball on this side of the house, I can get my short hops in. Or I'm going to work with, you know, I don't have a bow net, so I'm going to grab this net. Like, they've been really good at figuring and kind of maneuvering their way to get a little bit of normalcy, but in, you know, different circumstances. Um, one of my kids called and she's like, how far is home, how far would I need for the whole plate? And she mapped out a plate on her, uh, mapped out an infield in her coda sack so that she could work on taking some short hops and ground balls um, in her coda sack with a tennis ball. I think it's allowed us to be a little bit more creative and kind of work through some things, but we've also trained more. I've done more training on the mental side and the emotional side um, with my kids. Mm-hmm. We've never, we've, not never, but we haven't put as much time and energy into that in the past. And we spent a lot of time on that during the quarantine. What did you, what did you uh, learn from your kids or discover as a result of those conversations? Cause I'm sure it kind of uncovered some things that you maybe weren't aware of that these kids are going through. Yeah, so I didn't realize the how much, because kids are, like, awkward sometimes. So, like, I have a kid, or say there's a kid that doesn't talk much, but I didn't realize how much she needs to just be around the other girls, how lonely she felt just because she wasn't there. And I'm like, well, you never say anything. And she's like, I do. I say things. I'm like, no, you don't. But <laughs> she needed to just be with the girls. And so it's interesting for kids that we say spend a lot of time on their phone they need that social interaction that comes with sports they really do they need to be around their teammates and see them and um a lot of inside jokes I learned a lot of inside jokes I learned a lot about Chloe Ting on TikTok she does abs I learned about that no I don't do abs with them but I learned that that's a thing that they love is doing abs on TikTok um so I, I I did really enjoy that. I enjoyed the time with my kids. I enjoy, like you said, learning new things, seeing them talk outside of just on the field, and also just hearing like about school because they're doing it at home. So we ask a lot more questions about how school's going and stuff and have a lot of smart kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so when uh does the league start up or um it starts up on the fifteenth. Okay. 15. So the first, yeah, the first round, it's a Monday. Um, they moved, we had a major tournament called Texas State, Triple Crown Texas State. They moved it to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's the first thing that happens in the TFL. So. Exciting. It's, long. It's, look, it's looking great. It's mm-hmm. um, a lot of teams, a lot of different teams. I'm excited about that to play teams other than, you know, the five or six I normally play. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see you know, other teams. And, and I, that's the part I like about the TFL is it gives a level playing field for everybody. You know, there isn't a platinum bracket or a premier bracket. It's all one level playing field and you got to win to be at the top. Mm-hmm. How many teams are you guys at? Ooh, we're at like 300 and something teams last time I checked. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's, which we knew there was a lot in Texas. I mean, we knew that there's, I mean, there's probably that many teams in Houston. So yeah. Out of all those teams, how many, how many have female coaches? Ooh, a lot less. I can tell you that. Can you count on, on two hands or one hand? I think you can count on two hands. Well, okay. So that's the thing. Are there's female coaches on staff, but are they the head coach? Your answer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple. Mm-hmm. I, I, but to be fair, I don't see a lot of people trying to do that. It is hard. When I, I look for female coaches every year, and it's so hard to find them. Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. But it's hard. I, if there's female coaches watching, call me. <laughs> We're all you don't have to be in the Houston area. We can make it work. 14 states. We can get it done. I want more coaches. I just think it creates a unique opportunity to talk to someone that's doing what you that did what you want to do. I just think yeah. that's unique. You know? 
Yeah, you can't that. replace experience. No. Even no offense, but the other, but most of the, the dads are just making it up. Yeah. Well, or they're calling a female <laughs> coach, get the information, and then <laughs> taking it back, you know? And so mm-hmm. I'm like, just get it your staff. But it is a t- it's a tough thing to find them. I got we gotta do like a search, like a nation a softball nationwide search. Oh for coaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's some in there that don't they think they don't have enough time and you do, like it's it's different now than years ago, I think. I think it's gotten a little bit easier um to navigate if you're just a coach. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but is it is it a question of perception though? Because Obviously, for years and years, it, it was dads because. Yeah, and I'm not anti-dad. I want to say that. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not either. I, I, I love them. I appreciate them. Yes, but I just want more. I want more. Um, I want more, and I don't think that's wrong to want more. I want us to be to take more control of our sport if we can. So. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Just like you, what you're doing is big for us. I think that that's important, A, to have a media outlet that gives a lot of energy to softball. Normally softball is the fifth, sixth, seventh sport that they talk about, or this one, you know, we're the first. So yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I do feel like there's like a shift going on because it is, you know, I'm interviewing a lot of different people, getting a lot of different insights and the news has become like more popular than ever. And then people want to hear the discussion and opinions of us. And um, there's, there's a shift going on that like people are just into it. And I, I mean, I love it. I mean, they should be, it's a fast paced, aggressive, heart wrenching sport. I mean, it is, it, you get your heart into it and sometimes it's broken and sometimes it's not, but it, I mean, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you cannot love softball. I, don't, I just don't. I don't know how. Yeah. I have a son now, and I was asking um, my wife, "How are we going to be at baseball games? <laughs> like, I just cannot imagine watching baseball games for the next." You will. Game. I will. But I'm like, geez, it's going to be a big change because softball is just so exciting and so fast. Mm-hmm. So, so I'll be. I'll be there. Awesome. Um, for people who want to follow Impact Gold or get more information about Impact Gold, uh, where should they go? And then also um, with the Texas Fast Pitch League. So for Impact Gold, I think they should go to our uh, Facebook and that's just Impact Gold Org, uh, facebook.com slash Impact Gold Org, or go to our website, impactgold.com. Um, and for the TFL, the website is tflfastpitch.com or our Facebook as well, um, TFL Fast Pitch, facebook.com slash TFL Fast Pitch um, to get the most information. Um, it's updated often. Uh, we're excited. We're really excited to get going on that. I think that it's going to awesome. be awesome. I think that, especially with all the other leagues, I think the, you know, the bunches of little, the leagues, I say little, but the bunches of leagues around the country are going to be awesome to watch. I know I'm going to be tuned in, especially if Callie gets one. I'll be tuned in. I like to watch. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's happening. Come on. Yeah. I, just, I, mean, <laughs> too, cause I think that that's where, I mean, when I played, it was like you, you played in Texas and you went to California. So I'm tied mm-hmm. in a lot with, those guys, the Marty Tysons and the and those guys, they were I mean the guys I've played my whole life. So I am excited to see kind of what they bring and Rico and all that. Yeah. I know. Yep. There. So I'll be talking to Tony in uh after Tulsa Elite. So well, he's get- been awesome. I'm gonna tell you that. Um he reached out I reached out to him, of course, because he's an org head as well. So when this started happening, I kind of reached out to talk things through and just kind of get, I like to talk to people in the same situation and figure out, you know, kind of what the consensus is. And he was awesome. Talked to him for a good while. He called back. Hey, how are things in Texas? He's just always a really great guy. He's, uh, I'm a big Tony fan. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So hopefully we'll get uh, the inside scoop there 
I'm sure we will. I already told him that we were going to talk about it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be the, the breaking news. You'll yeah. Breaking. No, it's yeah. just cool to, to actually have this now and then to keep people informed and yeah. Um, yeah. I do think the summer is going to be a summer probably without college coaches in person. So I think we have to shift our mindset and go competitive. Like we have to, that's where we need to be anyway, but I think mm-hmm. that's what people need to focus on. I think they need to just get that out of their mind. College coaches yeah. will watch if they can watch, and if they don't watch, we still need to be playing good softball. Mm-hmm. And also just like on that front, um, I know there's been a ton of people who email me trying to get their teams featured or players featured. Uh, you know, keep them coming. I can't guarantee that they'll go up, but – I can guarantee that it's put in a folder that I frequently will go at and go into and look at and see, you know, depending timing wise on how things are in, in my time, you know, try to do the best I can. That. What's right, that? I'm gonna send you, I didn't know you could do that. I'm going to send you yeah. 50 emails in a minute. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll create the impact gold uh, folder and then go from there. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I want that information. Right. I'm just right. putting it out there. So whether you're in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, California, Arizona, I, I don't care. I look at all those emails. I may not respond right away, <laughs> but I do look at them. So. You're in Pennsylvania. Let us know who the, who the top picture, pictures coming out of there. They have good pictures that come out of there, man. I know. Um so. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I talked to you early on. Um, why why am I uh, Maddie Penta? Um, mm. But she's actually based. She plays for PA Chaos, but she's out of Maryland. Oh, that's mm-hmm. yeah. Get me one of those. I need to get me one of those kids that flies in and yeah, shuts it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for some reason. Sometimes Ohio too. Yeah, there's there's pictures like in the most obscure places and they show up and they're six one and they're seventy. I'm like, where did that kid where mm-hmm. have you been, buddy? They're yeah, like, barely oh. been taught anything. <laughs> like yeah. you need one of those. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need one of those. Yeah, I do. If so call me if you're mm-hmm. out there. Cool. And if you want a few minutes, call me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hit up jazz. Uh, well, thanks so much for, for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Jazz. I know. It's my watch. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> one of my kids, one of my kids, Colin, probably ask about the recruiting role. I have to guess. So. Yeah. Cool. You need to auto-reply if this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is what the rules say. Ooh, good call on the auto I never thought of that. All right. mm-hmm. Just a thought. No, thank you. I appreciate you and Flow Softball and everything you guys do for the sport and for Impact Gold. So. Thanks, Jazz. I appreciate it. Cool. You take care. Stay safe out there. We'll do. You the same. <laughs>